My next guest, Tara, survived the traumatic knife attack from her mom, Deborah's estranged husband, John. Tara says she quickly realized that her life was on the line and she knew she needed to either kill or be killed. Take a look. I am a survivor from a brutal attack from my mom's abusive husband. Before the attack, John was stalking me and my family members. He made threats to us. He was taking money from my mom and he was trying to exploit other family members. It was just every day you woke up not knowing what was going to be the bad thing that happened from him that day. I was living in fear for my life and for my mom's life and for my family's life. I was coming home from work. I got home and I got through my gate. My dog started barking and I looked over and I saw this guy and I thought it was a homeless guy living out of his car. Seconds later, I got out of my car and was attacked by my mom's ex-husband. He grabbed me by the waist, he looked me in the eyes and he said, do you remember me? I immediately was in fear. I bit him as hard as I could, and he tried to cover my mouth so I wouldn't scream. And then I ended up on my back, and I hurt my shoulders. I remember falling on the concrete. And then at this point, the knife was in a fast food bag, and now it was visible, and now I knew I was in a knife attack. So I had to block the knife as it was coming down onto me and I kept kicking his forearm so that it wouldn't hit me. I was able to kick the knife out of his hand and it landed on my right hand side. And at this time my dog was also biting his ankles and I was able to get the knife. I picked it up, I didn't give it a second thought. I stabbed him 11 times in the shoulder and then once in the forehead, and then the last one was in the eye. It really was me or him. It was my life or his life, and it felt like an episode of one of the zombie shows that I watch. Afterwards, there is really a big survivor's guilt, and I still really have it, even though he was such an evil person and he was a psychopath and he would have done this to anyone else and he would have tried to kill anyone else. I think that that's something that really does hurt me and that I do have more emotions held in is that I did have to take his life and that, you know, to end a life force is so hard and I felt bad because even though he came after me, my mom still loved him at once in her life and she has to go through the emotions of him dying too and even though he was so abusive it's so hard to not feel anything when someone dies it really was near him and i knew what i had to do i had to kill him uh, Tara, your your story is so shocking. I gotta say, you, you know, I was a policeman in Chicago, and I think I was more fearful of knives than I was guns. Um, a knife can be just terrifying. Yeah, and a knife is so personal where a gun attack, it's like you shoot someone and you don't have that direct contact with them. So a knife, when you're in a knife attack, it is so terrifying because you really are seeing all the blood happening. It's so physical. Yeah. Um, what was your relationship like with John before this happened? I did not have a good relationship with him. From the moment I met him, we kind of butted heads. And I was able to see that there was flaws in him that I was really wary of. And I really wanted my mom to look out for the red flags. No. My family hired a private investigator to get to know a little bit more information about him. We found out that other women had restraining orders against him. We found out that he's been in jail. We found out that he was selling drugs or that he got in trouble for selling drugs. And so we thought that this guy was a bad guy and this guy was really a bad guy. 
Yeah. And when you tell your mom everything that you found out, what was the reaction? What was her reaction? She was upset. She left him, and she ended up just trying to be away from him a while, but she ended up getting back together with him because he was able to convince her that the stuff that happened was different John Meehan's and that it wasn't him. And then your mom eventually did leave him, right? Yes, my mom left him. Now, since that attack on you, how, how has your life changed? There's so many women that have contacted us and told us that their story has helped them leave their abuser. And so now I feel it's my life journey to help these women escape their abuser and recover from their traumas. Yeah. Tara, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to your mother, so we're going to go to her, and then we'll bring you back, OK? OK, sounds good. Hi, Deborah. Hi, how are you? I, I, I'm great. You know, listening to your daughter, uh, I mean, this is a guy that, you know, when I look at the pictures of him, he obviously looked like he was uh, athletic, that he was very physically strong. And he went after your daughter with a knife, oh. and he ended up losing his life. He lost that battle with your daughter. Oh, she's amazing. I can't say enough great things about her. Uh, the growth, number one, how she's trying to help other women. The fact that she probably saved my life and many other women's lives by taking his life um, was a miracle. Yeah. And when your family, when you found out that they uh, hired a private investigator and this private investigator actually, you know, he found out some really bad things about him. Were you ever in fear of your life? A hundred percent. Wow. Um, I, I, I mean, I can't even imagine living with that kind of fear, looking over your shoulder constantly, like you said, changing passwords and doing all these things. When you find out, when you get the call that your daughter had been attacked by your husband, what, what, what went through your mind then? <laughs> Killed me. Uh, you literally, I, first of all, I think you go through guilt, you go through so much shock, um, the emotions. All I wanted to do was get to her. And I got to the, I don't know how I got to the crime scene, but I got there. And they won't, they wouldn't let me, you know, over the, the yellow tape. Yeah, but I, all I can see is that she was okay. She was sitting there holding her arm, and I thought, thank God, she's physically okay, but the emotional trauma. Uh, John was still alive after the attack. What happened at the hospital? Well, I got to the hospital, and because it was a crime scene, uh, there were d detectives with Tara, and they wouldn't let me in. And then they said, you really have to go and identify John. And all I could think of is, thank God, it was him, not my daughter. Yeah. Now, how how hard is it for you, Deborah, to move on from this this whole situation? For me, I'm one of those people that gets up <laughs> after something happens, and hopefully learn from it and move on. Can we bring your daughter in also? Uh, there, there you are, Tara. Hi, Tara. <laughs> Hi, Mom. You know, I Where think. Are you? Good job. You, you know, when when I'm watching the story on TV, I'm getting frustrated. And I'm like, what? Are, you know, me and my wife were screaming at the TV. We're like, what are you doing? You know, and then you know, to to come, both of you come out of it uh, again, uh, Tara. You know, to be that, uh, you know, tough. To me, that just really is unbelievable. That what you did. Uh, to be a survivor, to be under the most intense uh, pressure, being attacked with a knife. I just, I, I, I can't tell you how uh, proud of them I am of you, you know? And, and, and I'm also proud of you, Deborah. You, you, you know, you, you did the right thing. You got out of it when you could, when you really uh, knew more about the situation. So we, I think, listen, everybody uh, who watched it on TV or listening to your story right now, we're all rooting for your family, rooting for you guys. Glad that it seems like it's uh, all working out for you, and we, we really wish you well. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, good luck yeah. to you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.